Welcome to Escape to the Country. Now, today I'm in a county that's home to over 650 historic churches. That's thought to be the highest concentration anywhere in Europe. But which county are we in? Well, join us in just a few moments and I'll tell you. On today's show, our two house hunters are craving long-awaited rural retirement. And I'll be showing them some tantalising options. Is it you? I think it could be. <laughs> I think it could be. As the dream moves closer to reality. Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving absolutely, this. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Well, today we are in Norfolk, and this is the parish church in the village of Hemlington. Now, you can notice that distinctive round tower. It's a unique architectural feature of up to 125 of the churches up here, many of which, it's thought, date back to the Saxon period. These and the much later and more elegant medieval churches built on the back of the once thriving wool trade offer a fascinating picture into life here over the centuries, something I'll be taking a much closer look at later on in the programme. For me, it's buildings like this that make Norfolk and its landscape so distinctive. Low-leveled Norfolk is the largest county in East Anglia, with Lincolnshire bordering it to the west, Cambridgeshire to the southwest, and Suffolk to the south. It's the fifth largest county in the UK, and also lays claim to being the driest. It's home to the UK's most easterly city, Norwich, where the magnificent Norman Cathedral has dominated the skyline for more than 900 years. The Norfolk coastline stretches for nearly 100 miles, from Hopton on sea to the Wash. But the unmistakable feature of the county's landscape are the broads, flooded medieval peat excavations which today provide a series of navigable waterways and lakes. With 40% of the county's population living in the urban centres of Norwich, Great Yarmouth, Kings Lynn and Thetford, the countryside is sparsely populated and provides rich pickings for aspiring escapees. Now, I grew up in East Anglia and I've always had a soft spot for it, in particular for Norfolk. But recent improvements in the rail line between Norwich and London have made it popular with commuters, which you might think would have had an adverse effect on property prices. But there is some good news. At £215,000, the price of your average detached house here is still some £40,000 below the comparable national figure. Now, in general terms, the further north in the county you go, the more expensive it gets, thanks to the draw of the coast and hotspots like Cromer and, of course, the Norfolk Broads. But take it from me, there are some stunning homes here set within its famously broad landscape. And as for today's buyers, well, they've been thinking of moving here for a very, very long time. Jean and Mike have lived in their four-bedroom house just outside Northampton in the East Midlands since 1986. They met almost 30 years ago while both working for a musical instrument company. I first met Jean um, when she applied for a job uh, with the company I was working for. She eventually came to work for me. It became a little bit more than just kind of boss, worker relationship, and uh, we fell in love and got married. After having two children, they began another love affair, this time in the county of Norfolk. We had um, our first experience of life on the water in Norfolk 20 years ago. On the Norfolk Broads. On the Norfolk Broads. We went backwards and forwards to Norfolk every year, just spending a glorious week over there, looking at the wildlife, fishing, and just totally chilling out. After Mike retired earlier this year, they were at last free to follow their dream, which they have a rather unique approach to. Working for a Japanese company, they have a philosophy. Um, which is called third life. The Japanese actually have this phrase, when people retire, it's a new life. We look upon this as an opportunity to do all the things that we wanted to do, just between the two of us. One of their interests will dictate the kind of house they move to. Our biggest passion in life is music. That's how uh, we met, that's what brought us together all those years ago. I used to be a professional musician all from about the age of 18, played in the uh, German basses for American troops, then became more of a cabaret act. From the age of 14, I joined a band, we made a record, we went on Thank You Lucky Stars on TV, and then I turned pro. And back to a guy called Bo Brummel, we had a record at number 23 in the charts. And I did that for six or seven years. Over the years, we've kept on playing music and collecting instruments. So in our new house, we have to have a music room. 
And they have a good pot of money to finance their dream. The budget for the move is £425,000. As the Norfolk Broads are undoubtedly the draw for Jean and Mike, we're concentrating our search on the area between Norwich and the coast where these waterways are located. And I'm meeting them there to establish more about their plans. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very nice to see you both. And you too, John. Welcome, well, back to Norfolk, I suppose, because actually this is a long-held ambition, isn't it? Well, it is. We've been 20 years in the making. The kind of property you're after interests me because, unusually, you have specified single storey. I had bungalow before uh, we moved into the house. I loved it. Having everything accessible on the ground floor is wonderful. Mm. But it also means that as you get older, the leaves Well, start. we're thinking about the knees, really. <laughs> so, uh, no stairs. You are looking ahead to this being your this ultimate move, I suppose. Yeah, this is yeah. our final... This is where we want to be, and, and it's going to be the last move we want to make. So it's got to be right. One of the criteria is, is having a music room, yeah. which is kind of crucial for us. So yeah. I think on a single story, that's more, you know, much more possible. Yeah. Would you be prepared to build something bespoke, say, in the garden, if the property didn't have space? Oh, yeah. If there is no room that could be adapted, then I researched and I found that there is a company that will make uh, a purpose-built studio that you can actually put in your garden. And how much would that cost you? About 25 grand. OK, well, that's a figure worth bearing in mind, isn't it, as we yeah. go through mm. yeah. our properties. What else does it need to have, this new dream home, Mike? En suite, at least two other bedrooms besides the main bedroom. Um, a nice uh, kitchen diner. How much do we want to spend? <laughs> Well, if everything was there, yep. £425,000. OK. Well, we're not short of pretty properties in Norfolk. We have, however, got, I think, three very viable options for you. So I think we should get out there and see if we can sell them off. Fantastic. Right. For a maximum budget of £425,000, Mike and Jean would like their long-dreamed-of Norfolk home to be single-storey, with three bedrooms, a large kitchen diner, an all-important music room, and ideally, it should be located within a 15-minute drive of water. We've got some intriguing properties to reveal to our house hunters, but we won't be revealing the price tags until they've guessed at the value first. And our third and final mystery house might just challenge everything they thought they wanted. To start our search, we're travelling right to the heart of the Norfolk Broads and the village of Horning. One of the prettiest and best-known villages in the Norfolk Broads National Park, Horning lies on the north bank of the River Burr. Because of its great access to the water, it's a popular location for boating and is a busy tourist centre. But it's not just a seasonal town. With pubs, shops and other amenities, it's a good place to live all year round. And ten minutes' drive away in Small Burr, is our first property. Well, this is quite an entrance, isn't it? Really? Wow, Incredible. Yes. Yeah. You get all this, the drive and the grass either side of it. Wow. Gracious. And it's the approach to property number one, which what? is <laughs> that. Wow. Gracious me. Single story. Sure thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know you wanted a sense of uh, rural life, obviously, but you didn't want to be isolated. Yeah, absolutely. So as you can see, we've got other buildings around us. There are six other properties in this sort of complex, as it were. You also get the view of the duck pond, but you don't have to look after it, which is even better. <laughs> uh, and you get the property here. I mean, if you saw this in an estate agent's window, would it pique your interest? If it's... you just showed that little bit, you probably think, mm-mm. But because of... What I can now see... The whole location. Oh, yeah. And you know this area quite well, don't you? Yeah. We, but we've never but been we to never, this area, we don't know this, this particular never, spot. Yeah. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Well, it's a day of first, isn't it? This is. Yeah. yeah. It is, absolutely. Well, let's have a look and see what you think of the inside. <laughs> OK. This 19th century barn was converted into a four-bedroom home in 1985. As it seems Mike and Jean wouldn't have picked this out themselves, I'm pleased we're here or they'd be missing a treat. Well, there is only one place, really, I think, to start in this property, <laughs> and it's here. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's much bigger and brighter than I thought it was going to be. We just didn't expect this, so... It's very funky. I love it. Yeah. There's lots of exposed wood, and it all goes through to a very nice conservatory come dining area as well. But styling-wise, is this the sort of thing you would go for? Um, I, d I think 
To be honest with you, this would not have been on our first criteria, but actually now we're here and we're looking at it, looking at the ceiling, the, the, the beams, the exposed yeah. wood. We love it, I think. Yeah. That's, our first, that's our first reaction. Well, let's go, go through to the kitchen, see what you think of this. Okay. And there, the kitchen. Oh, look at that. Wow. That is country kitchen. Didn't expect that either. No. The way they've set it up really suits the feel of the place and, and the aged feel without, uh, without giving you an old-fashioned look. It just works. It feels like it's always been here. Absolutely. Yeah, it has a very natural feel. Yeah. Sure. So is it you? Yeah. <laughs> I think it could be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it could be. <laughs> The living rooms are on one side of the property, with the bedrooms on the other. Of the three guest rooms, there's one box room and one which is already being used as a music room. And then there's the master suite. Now, this is yours. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, look at that. And a bath in an ensuite. You don't often get that. Yeah. Very yeah. Nice. Look at the wall. Brick. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Again, this, this theme of textures mm. kind of coming through every it room. It is. It is. Big like enough that. for you, though? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, let's go and have a look in the garden, because there we've got you a fabulous studio, mm -hmm. which you could certainly embellish, improve, or just use as maybe your music room. Well, you know, one of the things he wanted to do when he retired was to take back doing watercolours and stuff, so there you are. Here's some inspiration for you. Come and look at this lot. OK. The house is set in three quarters of an acre, comprising the driveway approach at the front and a large lawn garden to the rear, where the potential studio is located. So, the garden. Well, almost what you can see is what you get. There is a wow. bit more, too, beyond that rose arch, uh, bonfire area and mm. so on. But the key thing to consider is that building over there. Yeah. Fantastic. Currently the artist's studio. Yeah. Um, it's on quite a big plot, as you can see. It could do with a bit of updating, if we're honest, mm -hmm. but you had already considered spending up to 25 grand sure. on we a bespoke had. music room. We sure. had. We might think about that sum of 25 grand when we talk about the price, yeah. mm. which we'll do now. Now, you've already mentioned um, about us having 25 grand in the budget to perhaps sort a studio, so that makes me think that this won't be at the top of our budget. Mm. So I would say 375,000 pounds. 375, yeah, Mike? I think a little bit more. I think 390. Now, I would have said 390, but I and you both would have been wrong. Oh. Because this is on the market at £365,000. Wow. Really? Yes. How about that? Which would bring it to 390 <laughs> if you if built you that. the new studio. Wow. Hmm. Very interesting, Jules. That yeah. is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that really is. is. Really yeah. is. Go in there. Explore okay. the studio, come music room, or den, whatever it's going to be, and I will catch up with you later. Thank okay. you. Thank you. For £365,000, Mike and Jean get a single-storey barn conversion with four bedrooms, two large airy living rooms and an artist's studio, all set in three-quarters of an acre of mature grounds. And it leaves plenty of cash left over for a brand-new music studio. Oh, this is an interesting space, isn't it? I don't think it would do as a music room, but I certainly wouldn't um, remove it or anything. This is a great feeling, yeah. great atmosphere. Yeah. We could keep this, should keep it as it is, and, yeah. and put the music room somewhere else. Yeah. This was a big surprise. Didn't expect something um, that looked like this does. But when I came inside, I was really pleasantly surprised. It's airy, it's light, feels nice and cosy but not confined in any way. Stepped in and straight away we felt space and moving into the kitchen. There was a very nice natural feeling with the wood, that feeling that this, yeah, this was a barn once, but now it's been converted into a home. After you, madam. Thank you. Well, I'm rather pleased. I think as um, property searches go, they don't start much better than this one. Great start, Jules. Really good start. Can we better it? <laughs> are not the first people to fall in love with Norfolk's waterside lifestyle. 
The Broads have been a popular boating holiday destination since the late 19th century, when the first small yachts were made available to hire. The waterways are now flooded with all manner of modern craft, but there is one group of enthusiasts committed to preserving boats which hark back to a bygone era. We've arranged for Mike and Jean to meet senior boat builder John Franks of the Norfolk Heritage Fleet Trust. They maintain a unique fleet of historic Broadland boats, still going strong more than 80 years after they were first built. The yard was uh, established in 1932 by Percy Hunter and his two sons. They actually uh, bought the, uh, the site and constructed all the wooden boats that you see around here within these two sheds. So it's still all the original buildings. 1930s was the real heyday of, of sailing on the broads. Uh -huh, yeah. um, there was a lot of uh, very rich people in the area and they would hire crew to do the sailing regattas. It was uh -huh. very prestigious. Uh -huh. So would you say that these boats are specifically designed for use on the broads? Absolutely. Uh, these boats are built for purpose. That is to sail on narrow waterways and to traverse through the narrow bridges that we have on the broads. So there's not really a waterway within the, the river system that these boats cannot get into. Well, if you'd like to come this way, I'll be able to show you a boat that we have actually in the shed at the moment that we're doing some repairs on. So if you'd like Brilliant. to follow me. These magnificent cabin yachts have remained virtually unchanged since they were first built in the 1930s, including the fact that they have no power or electricity on board. Inside the boat sheds of Hunter's Yard, work is underway to ensure the preservation of these noble ladies of the broads. Here we have Hustler One. This is out for repair. Uh, the boats are mahogany on oak frame. And for 1936, she's not doing too bad. In the winter, what do you do with the boats? Do they all have to come out? Do they all come into the sheds? Yes, we um, bring them in from the uh, dike. We'll strip them completely down. The sails will be uh, dried, which they're currently being done at the moment. And uh, all the boats are then lined up in the area here. So both sheds will be completely full uh, of, of boats. They're all snug away in the winter. It's during the winter months that the real repairs get underway to ensure these boats could continue to be enjoyed out on the water. Martin and Jean are going out on one of the half-deckers, a day boat with no berth. Right, ready about. Skipper Martin Cowley might have a job on his hands to keep this one out of the repair shed. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, wow. But let's hope it's plain sailing for Mike and Jean's future life on the Broads. For our second property, I'm taking Mike and Jean further north to the village of Swanton Abbott, which would offer them access to water within 10 minutes. The nearest town is North Walsham, which offers plenty of shops and amenities. Swanton Abbott is just over three miles away. It's a pretty village with a charming 14th century church and some beautiful rural properties. And it's here that house number two is located. OK, you can turn around and have a proper look at it. There we are. Wow. That's number two. Happy? Look at that! It's amazing! But you're probably thinking, but Jules, it's not a bungalow. <laughs> no, it's not. It was originally a kind of two-up, two-down cottage. But in the last five years, they've added on a huge single-storey extension. Have they? Which gives you another further two bedrooms. So it's a four-bedroom property. Oh, wow. Uh, so effectively, it's single level. Sure. But with a roof. Okay. <laughs> with a roof. Thatched. That'll do. Thatched. And a thatch. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we could really come up here without showing okay. you a thatch or indeed something that's got a bit of flint in it, because that really is that's Norfolk. That's Norfolk, yeah. 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 That yeah. is Norfolk, the flint, Norfolk flint. Again, surprise. Um, and it's something, again, that uh, would not be on our criteria because we wouldn't, we're not looking for a thatched cottage. Yeah. So I think you've kind of, uh, yeah, taken us by surprise. Let's have a look inside. OK. With the original cottage over 300 years old, this is a classic slice of Norfolk heritage. And the property retains many of its original features. So how's this for cosy, then? Oh, wow, well, yeah. Wow. Yes? This is cosy. This is Norfolk, yeah. isn't it? This is Norfolk, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the beans. I mean, that speaks for itself, right. I think. There's another one of these next door. Uh -huh. There's a, a lovely little snug there, actually, um, <laughs> which you could reinstall the fire into. But, yeah, I think cosy is the word I would use. 
Yeah. Certainly. At original. Look at the door. I know. Yeah, stable door there. Stable door. Now yep. that goes through to part of this new extension, which gives you what they've got as a sort of study corridor at the moment. But it also leads into a uh, quite an interesting family bathroom, roll top bath, etc. Oh, wow. is in there. Lovely. What's the surprise again? Yeah, Very a good one. Better. Interesting, oh, one. interesting one. Let's say interesting one. Yes. <laughs> interesting is one of those great words. It's a real caveat for I'm not really sure. Well, I was sitting on the well, bench. I, I am not really sure. I hadn't envisaged anything as old as this. So this is quite different for me. But like I said, open to you know, all sorts. The kitchen, which is through there, I think is one of the real selling points. Oh, wow. Have a look okay. at this. Let's have, Let's a look. have a look. OK, this I love. It's this growing sense of space that this room gives you. Oh, wow, yeah. You come through from the dark, cosy end into this, well, fabulous kitchen, I think. Gracious, it's a real country kitchen, kitchen isn't it? Yeah, kitchen diner. Butler sink. Yeah. Range. Yeah. Look, look at that. Well, this is a good space. This is good. I think when you come into here, this house starts to make sense. Mm. It does. Because this is a place where you're going to spend an awful lot of time. Yeah, you could have a banquet here. Through here is the rest of the new extension, which offers you bags of room. Wow. Okay. The extension consists of a kitchen diner, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, the study and two utility rooms. Which means with the living rooms in the cottage, Jean and Mike would have complete single-storey living. There are, however, two upstairs bedrooms in the old house which could be used for guests. Up in the eaves, they're accessed by a narrow staircase. Back down on the ground floor, I'm showing them one of the other two bedrooms. They're wondering if whether this could become something of a sort of music room. Right. It's certainly big enough and, and the shape enough. of the ceiling would give you some good acoustics. Yeah? Yeah. 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 This is what we are thinking about in terms of internal music room. But let's have a look at the master bedroom. So there we are. Oh, wow. Well, that's nice and light and airy, isn't it? It's probably the lightest room in the house, actually. I think mm. so. Um, with shower room en suite there, but could it work? It's a yeah. space and could work, yeah. 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 OK. How much is it worth? Let's go to the garden and discuss. Follow me. The house is set in a third of an acre of mature gardens. Well, the garden, you got a pretty good look at when we first arrived. Mm -hmm. It's pretty extensive. It would certainly incorporate the freestanding brand new music room that we discussed at property number one. Plenty big enough. Uh, very choose. manageable. Very manageable. Yeah. yeah. How much is it on the market for then? 350. I would say a bit more. Yeah. Well, I think it's nearer four, so 395. 395. It's actually on the market at 399950. Oh, not too far out then. Very different proposition to number one. Mm -hmm. It's more money, but does it give you more house and does it give you more what you're looking for? That's the big question. Mm. Go and explore those attic rooms. OK. And I'll catch up with you later on. Right. OK. For just shy of £400,000, this attractive thatched cottage with a modern extension offers four bedrooms with the potential for one to be used as a music room, two bathrooms, a large kitchen diner, as well as a third of an acre of land. Wow, look at this. Oh, this is quaint. It's very quaint. Mind you, after a couple of glasses of wine, I don't know if I could negotiate those stairs. Maybe this is the guest room. Oh, I agree. Guest room. The first room was, was nice snug, obviously very quaint with the beams. It had that typical cottage feel. The old part of the, of the house, that was full of character. And that was the opposite to the new part, which was very extensive, but I didn't feel there was a good flow. Thinking about the needs for the future, the practicality of going up and down the stairs, um, look, I think slightly puts us off a little. Ah! Are we all done? <laughs> we Sarah are. Madam. All done. Very good. Well, it's an interesting way to finish our first day of house hunting. Very much so. One more to come tomorrow, though. Yeah. Mm. Ready for the mystery house? Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on, then. It's the second day of our house hunt in the Norfolk Broads where Jean and Mike are escaping suburban Northamptonshire with a budget of £425,000 to spend on a rural home. Coming up, is it job done with the mystery house? 
Right, what are we moving in then? Yes. Well, <laughs> are we now? Yeah. And I discover some of the county's dark secrets. This, we think, is a curse. A curse? Well, there is no getting away from the fact that for Mike and Jean, this move has been a long time in the making, 20 years, in fact. But their sense of passion and urgency to finally get on with what Mike describes as their third life is clear for all to see. Now, yesterday went well. We're certainly on to something with property number one, but we're really going to push the boat out for our final offering, our mystery house for our couple who love water and the Norfolk Broads in particular. This one is a cracker. Now, yesterday I thought was very interesting. Uh, two very different properties. Has that provoked a discussion that's gone on into the evening? Well, it did. Um, we were very taken with property number one uh, to the degree that we actually redesigned it over dinner. Um, we, we decided where we were going to put the new music room. That would be right out the back. And even a few changes internally. So, Mike, what do you think our mystery house might uh, comprise? We're hoping that we're maybe going to be able to see water from this mystery house. Almost. <laughs> Almost. That's all I'm going to tell you. But oh, if wow. water's what you want, water is what I am going to give you. <laughs> Thank you. For today's Mystery House, we're going back into the centre of Norfolk Broad Territory to the village of Ranworth. Situated alongside Malthouse Broad on the River Burr, Ranworth is a popular place both to live and take a holiday. Its impressive 15th century church, St Helens, is known as the Cathedral of the Broads. The village is also home to a unique wood and thatch village hall. And just 10 minutes' drive away, we're getting closer to the mystery house. Well, you wanted a taste of the broads. <laughs> and look at where we are. This is Upton Dyke, and it leads up there about half a mile to the River Bure, which I think you know quite well. Mm, we, we do. do. We've uh, motored, motored the river many times, and we've gone past the dyke many times, but we've never actually come down here. So it's really nice to come here and uh, see the yachts. The reason we are here is to tease you with our mystery house because we love this place and it really sets the scene for what might be your future because our mystery house is just down the road. Oh, wow. Shall we? Let's. And as ever, today's is a wild card and something I know Mike and Jean would never have considered themselves. Can I look? You can look. You can look that way. Good grief. That's... We're in classic mystery house territory here oh, with our chapel. Much. Look at yes. that. Didn't know we were going to church, did you? No, dear. <laughs> wow. Wow. The only compromise with this one is that it's not a bungalow, obviously. <laughs> it is this cavernous chapel which has been beautifully converted. Look at that. Uh, I love the outside, Jules. Yeah. That is captivating. It really is. We always said that we were open to all suggestions and... Uh, I don't think we expected this, <laughs> but uh, it's, I, it's not a problem. Just now, really eager to see inside. Yeah. Well, there's an awful lot of it. Ooh, Come and have a look. Well, their interest is definitely piqued with the exterior of this 1874 Methodist chapel. And I think their desire for space and character will be rewarded on the inside. You see what I mean? <laughs> Gracious me. Oh. I'm speechless. Look, the fireplace. I oh, know. Now, the fireplace is really clever. What they've done in, in dividing it up is to create the fireplace there, which obviously is off-centre and at an angle, and then behind that is a separate snug or music room. Oh, my. It breaks up the box, and it's really clever. I love these iron pillars. So do I. Staircase. I know, I'm just looking. Spiral staircase. Glorious. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So you could have lovely recitals in here, couldn't well, you? Well, quite, oh, yeah. because of the space and the ceiling, the mm. height of the ceiling. So yeah. the, Think of the parties. The acoustic in here would be, would be good, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, very much so. Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah, I'm loving absolutely, this. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look at the kitchen, then. The chapel was converted six years ago and has kept the large dimensions Mike and Gina are after. Look at this one. It's a cracker. Isn't it, Jess? I love it. This is incredible. <laughs> right, when are we moving in, then? Yes. Well, are we now? Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful house. It's a really good option for the both of you. Behind me in here, quite a generous study. Oh. Wow. 
could be a music room again if you wanted it to be whatever or another snug. Um, yeah, I yeah. really, really love it. Now, as I said on the outside, the only compromise is that it's not a bungalow, but I don't think we care anymore, do we? No, no. absolutely not. Can we use the stairs, then? <laughs> OK. <laughs> After you. A downstairs wet room and a generous utility room make up the rest of the ground floor layout. Upstairs, there is another large bathroom and two double guest rooms in addition to the main suite. So this is your bit. Aren't they lovely, these beams? Oh, beautiful. Really. And they've, they've retained them, that's the main thing. Really lovely. You've also got really nice ensuite through there. Oh, it does. Um, I think um, we are onto a bit of a winner with this one. I think you could yeah. well be. Yeah, mm -hmm. you've really, really taken us by surprise on ah. this one. And we don't care about bungalows anymore. No, oh, no, no not one. <laughs> you what see, I thought that might disappear. Excellent. Their enthusiasm is music to my ears, but we have yet to discuss the price tag. A little bit of decking, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Not a huge garden, but I'm thinking you're going to be busy out on the water. Absolutely. This is plenty. This is lovely. Look at that. It's the way enough. they've done that, it's, it's enough. Wonderful. How much do we oh. like it? You know what's coming now, yeah, don't you? I know, I know. <laughs> OK, Jean, short and sweet, make me an offer for our mystery chapel. Right. 425 grand. 425. Mike. 450. 450. 435. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Really? Oh, wow. It's 435. Now, of course, it's technically over your budget of 425, but I think it's a stretch worth making. I should also tell you that they have had an offer on it, mm -hmm. but right. it's been rejected. So if this is for you, you may need to think and act fairly Pretty quickly, quick. quickly. Yep. swiftly, yeah. I hadn't expected anything like this. Yeah. You've really surprised us, but you've really pulled it out of the bag. Well mm. done. Absolutely. Well, look, this is clearly a building you have enjoyed. Go and spend some time and indulge it. Thank you. At Thank your you. Heart's content. We will. <laughs> Off you go. Thanks. Thanks. Brilliant. Well, there we are. Our mystery chapel is everything they've wanted, but everything they weren't expecting. Sometimes with mystery houses, that's just the way it goes. So, at £10,000 over budget, at £435,000, Mike and Jean would get an impressive converted chapel with three to four bedrooms, three downstairs living rooms, one of which would make a perfect music room, and all located just five minutes from the water. The minute I got inside, I felt at home. I thought, this is me. This is so homely, yet elegant. The, the character feel is here. And the open space and the light, I, I could go on forever, but I really, really like it. Walking into the lounge area, I, it was just, just a real, real pleasure. The height of the ceiling and amazing fireplace. I think the highlight for me is I could, I've never, ever imagined living in a chapel. I can't find anything wrong, and I'm being totally honest there. There's nothing that I would change. After you, Mike. Thank you. After you, Jean. Well, our chapel seems to have stolen your hearts, doesn't it? Absolutely. It has been, yeah. But we have given you, in total, three fantastic options, each of which deserve your full consideration. So, let's go think, shall we? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. The old chapel isn't the only religious building causing excitement in the county. I'm visiting Norwich's spectacular cathedral to learn about a revealing graffiti project that is shedding new light on medieval society. The project archaeologist is Matthew Champion. Matthew. Jules. Nice to see you. Pleasure. Now, you're running this graffiti survey, which is an odd thing in many respects, because I suppose today we take a fairly dim view of graffiti, but for you, it's really given us a whole new window on the past. What we've been doing is looking at pre-Reformation and medieval graffiti and um, it's giving us a whole new understanding of what was going on with the medieval parish. The Norfolk Medieval Graffiti Survey began in 2010. Since then, its volunteers have been uncovering thousands of fascinating inscriptions. Here's a really good place to start looking. Um, if you stand back and look at a wall like this with our natural daylight on it, you can't really see a great deal. You've got Just a few scratches. Absolutely. Um, however, if you get in close and if you start using one of these, suddenly it all changes. Here we go. 
Ah, yeah. God, isn't it amazing? It's such a simple addition of light. Absolutely. But it picks it out a treat. It's just what we call a raking light service. So the first thing you can see here, and the most obvious thing on this particular pier, is this ship. This ship, yeah. Um, and it dates back to about 1450. But why ships? In a cathedral. The idea was we find a lot of these by the coast. However, we're now finding them as far inland as Leicestershire. We think these are devotional in nature, whether they were uh, thanks for a, uh, a voyage safely undertaken or whether they were asking for a safe, uh, a safe passage yet to come. But what fascinates me is that here we are in, let's face it, an elite building. How did people get away with this? Back then, I think we have to assume that it was both accepted and acceptable. But in the Middle Ages, just about every inch of this cathedral would have been painted. So far from being hidden away and difficult to see, it would have been one of the most obvious things you saw as you walked into this cathedral. Matthew's team have created reconstructions of what they believe the churches and these inscriptions would have looked like when they were made. Now, one thing that I see a lot of in historic buildings, particularly in beams above fireplaces, are what we would loosely call witches' marks. Presumably, the cathedral's got a few of those. Uh, absolutely, and it's probably got some of the finest ones we've ever come across in the country. Uh, and in fact, I can show you one of the best I've ever found. Right, go on, let's have a look. In Norwich Cathedral alone, there are thought to be between two and 5,000 inscriptions, and some have a darker side. Take a seat, Jules, and we've got a very special piece just here. Now, if I run that light across the surface, you can see in here we've suddenly very clearly got a medieval text. Uh, it's quite difficult to read, and that's because it's upside down. I was going to say, it looks back to front. It is. It's, it's um, not, not back to front, but it has been inverted. And just below it, you can just make out this other symbol here. Um, this is an astrological symbol, and it's a symbol associated with the moon. Now, when you were talking about your witch marks and your yeah. protection marks, I think what we've got here is one step beyond. This, we think, is a curse. Curse. This is a late medieval Directed curse. at somebody or something specific? Very specific. In this case, if you can read the text backwards, we've got the letters K-A-Y-N-F-F-O-R-D. But it's clearly produced by somebody who is literate at a time when not everybody was. There is a suspicion that these were actually produced by members of the clergy, clerics. So you could effectively order a curse upon somebody by having a chat with the clergy. What you've got to remember is the medieval church was quite into cursing. Um, many of their services involved curses. Cursed be he who moves his neighbour's boundary stone. So it's only a very short step away in the medieval mind from actually bringing down God's wrath and God's curse on something to actually being able to bring a specific wrath on a specific person. But why is it upside down? It's this idea of something that's broken and inverted. So where your wonderful witch marks and protection marks were the right way up, when you invert it, it brings down the opposite effect. Absolutely fascinating. A, a, a genuinely unique window on the medieval past here. Um, a genuinely unique window on the medieval mind. Matthew, I could spend all day here, and on cue, the bells. It's certainly a project that has sparked my imagination. And with another 400 medieval churches in Norfolk still to survey, who knows what else will be found. Well, it is, of course, now decision time for our musical duo of Jean and Mike, and they are so obviously excited about trying to turn their future dreams into some sort of a reality that I can't wait to hear what happens next. Well, what a fun time we have had. I've really enjoyed showing you two around Norfolk, and I've learned a lot about Norfolk from you two as well. It's been tremendous, Jules, I can't tell you. I mean, we, we never expected to see what we've seen. We started with a property which remained the front runner for most of our search. Our second property didn't quite do it for you, did it, our thatch? No, not I, really. No, not, not really. really, and I was frightened to death of the stairs. Were you? Yeah, I got this thing about stairs, you see. Well, stairs <laughs> were the moot point because you did say <laughs> endlessly how much you wanted a bungalow. And then we went to our mystery house, which had a spiral stair. Yeah. But all objections flew out the window with that one. They certainly did. You captured us totally. The minute I walked in, that was it. I just felt, I'm at home, this is it. We didn't expect to, to see a chapel. I mean, the chapel was not on the radar at all. And it's got everything. We can make a music room inside. Mm -hmm. We don't need to put a music room outside. Yep. But, of course, it is challenging your budget somewhat at 435. Can you do it? Well, I think what we'd probably like to do, Jules, is go in with an offer and see how we go with air. Fabulous. Mm. Guys, I wish you all the very best of luck. I do hope to hear in the not-too-distant future that you've Ooh. done it and you've moved in. Thank Jules. you, Thank Jules. Thank you very much. We've had a great time. Thank you.
You know, people often ask me to describe what it's like house hunting on Escape to the Country, and I suppose in many ways I'd liken it to the Grand National, but of course in our case it's only ever going to be a three-horse race. Occasionally nobody reaches the finish line. Sometimes it's a photo finish between two or indeed all of them. And every now and then there is, of course, a clear winner, and that is what's happened this week. In the final furlong, our mystery house has come storming up the outside to take the prize. And now, with any luck, and very soon, Mike and Jean will be calling it home. So that's it from me, from the Norfolk Broads, and the rain. I'll see you next time. And I'm happy to say that Mike and Jean have made an offer on the mystery house which has been accepted. So I'm hoping it won't be too long until they're making music in their new chapel home. If you'd like to escape to the country in Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England, or perhaps further afield to the continent and would like our help, then please apply online. <laughs>